Let's move on to the third group of cognitive functions, the executive functions. Those functions allow us to make decisions, organize, plan, follow up and adjust our behaviors. Many of the executive functions seem to be developed in a higher degree in humans in comparison to other species. Not least our ability to perform advanced executive functions in collaboration with others. We will briefly mention the neurobiology of some important executive functions. Decision making, planning, initiating and implementing behavior, impulse control and cognitive control. So together, these executive functions help us to organize our behavior so that we can achieve the goals that we have set up. They help us, with other words, to form a goal-directed behavior. It's important to note, however, that a goal-directed behavior is something else than, for example, conditioned behavior, which means that you act in a learned and automatic way in response to the stimuli you encounter or a bottom-up directed behavior, which means that your behavior is formed only as a reaction to what is currently happening around you. Simple and easy decisions in everyday situations are mostly made subconsciously on a striatal level, such as how to put butter on the bread, it's a rather automated decision. But the more the, deci the decisions are associated with risk-taking, and the less familiar you are with the situation, and the less prepared you are, the more decision-making process also involves the prefrontal cortex. Such as the decision of when to overtake when you drive a car on the highway. These active decisions also involve emotional ingredients. The emotional framing of the situation and the emotional memories you have of similar situations before affect your decision-making. According to a model called the somatic marker hypothesis, you tend to avoid such alternatives that are associated with negative body memories or fear. And instead you choose what you associate with feelings of relief, happiness or other kinds of success. Parts of the prefrontal cortex that are particularly involved in this are the ventromedial prefrontal cortex and the orbitofrontal cortex. When the decision is made about what type of goal to achieve, then the behavior to achieve this goal is planned so that the behavior is coordinated, energy economic and also safe. And this is really a prefrontal cortex speciality. The prefrontal cortex is often regarded as the composer of our conscious behaviors but it doesn't invent everything from scratch every time something needs to be planned. According to a model called the cortical selection hypothesis, the prefrontal cortex chooses from a large set of simple learned behavioral programs, also called modules, and then combines them. Most of the more advanced behaviors we just mentioned are planned in the motor cortex regions of the frontal cortex and executed via connections with the basal ganglia and cerebellum down through the spinal cord. But not every behavior is initiated in the frontal cortex. It is good to know that behaviors can also be initiated on other levels of the central nervous system. For example, on the thalamic and sensory cortex level, reflex-like evasive actions can be initiated that make you flinch back or redirect your attention. On hypothalamic level, behaviors are initiated that restores the homeostasis of the body. On the limbic level, in the insular cortex, the anterior cingulate cortex or amygdala, conditioned reactions and affects are processed. Some of the fight, flight and freeze reactions can be elicited on the brainstem level in the periacroductal gray. And of course, on the spinal level, simple reflexes are activated. Impulse control refers to the capacity to arrest an impulse to act in line with the stimulus currently present in the consciousness. Maybe because it interferes with the long-term goals that you have in a maladaptive way, or perhaps it is socially inappropriate. For example, when you stop a sneeze attack during a conversation with someone, or you decide not to let go of your anger in a traffic jam. 
Again, the prefrontal cortex is central. Different parts of the prefrontal cortex seem to be specialized in different kinds of impulse control. For example, the orbitofrontal cortex seems to be involved when it comes to response control in social situations. Finally, we will say a few words about the cognitive control. This is the ability to continuously coordinate, optimize and regulate one's ongoing goal-directed behavior. In situations that are new and that are difficult to master, you need to exert cognitive control of your behavior. When they have been well known, the need for cognitive control is less. For example, learning to drive a car takes a lot of cognitive control. Both anterior cingulate cortex and dorsolateral prefrontal cortex are critical for cognitive control. Anterior cingulate cortex reacts when there are signals that indicate that the goal has not been reached or when the individual needs to change behavior to achieve the goal. The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, with its large working memory resource, is a resource that can be used to solve complex situations. For example, when the anterior cingulate cortex has alarm that the behavior needs to be adjusted. So, to wrap up the fascinating topic of cognition, in this video we have gone through some of the major functions that humans possess to be able to adapt to an ever-changing environment.